another Router Gods video. My name is Humphrey Chung, and in this video, we're going to take a look at Topology Zero, our updated Topology Zero with two routers and two loopbacks. We're going to play around with the OSPF command default information originate. Uh, actually, it's not just OSPF, some other routing protocols have it. And what this command will do is it's going to tell other routers in our network that we have a default way of getting out to the outside world or the internet. So on our two routers, router one and router two, we're going to assume that router two is our border router. We are connected to the internet over here on fast zero one. We, we are going to pretend that uh, we have the internet here. And this IP address is gonna be 192.168.1.1. And then the ISP's side of things will be 192.168.1.2. Everything to the left of router two is our internal network. And what we wanna do is we wanna basically tell all the other routers inside of here that to get to the internet, you have to go to router two. And router two has to answer or the routes to go and go to the right here, to the internet. So normally, if you didn't know how to use default information originate, you'd be using the IP route statement. So you do IP route, all zeros, all zeros, and then some IP address. Now the problem with that is that uh, you'd have to go to every router to do that. So we're gonna do it a different way. So to start off, we're going to go on router two and configure the interface, because I have the IP addresses for the loopbacks and the fast ethernet zero zero configured. I just need to do fast zero one. So interface fast zero one, IP address 192.168.1.1 and make it a slash 24. I'm gonna no shut. Even though there's nothing else on the other side of this, I'm gonna no shut it just for kicks. I'm gonna exit out of there, show IP int BR, and we've got our fast ethernet 01, our IP address up and up. Looks pretty good. Now I'm going to configure a static route going out. Actually, before I do that, let's configure OSPF. So router OSPF1. Network all zeros, all zeros, area zero. So that's router, actually this is router two. I'm gonna go over to router one, do the same thing, router OSPF one, network all zeros, all zeros, area zero. And in a couple seconds, you should see an adjacency form between the two routers. And it might take about 10 seconds or so. Or so. And we're waiting, and we're waiting. Well, I guess while we're waiting, we could pop in the default information originate command. So it's default, this is done under the OSPF routing process. Default information, so default dash information. We'll do a question mark here. The word originate, question mark. And we have two options here. We can hit enter, or we can add in the word always. Now let's see what happens if we do default information originate without the always statement at the end. And you can just see right now our adjacency came up, which is pretty good. So default information originate, let's do that. We'll exit out of there. And let's see if this changed anything if I do a show IP route. Nothing has changed there. If I do a show IP OSPF database, we don't have anything. Everything looks pretty much as it is without uh, another route in there. If I do show IP protocols, you can see here that I'm routing for protocols, but nothing really. Okay, so it does say here that it is an autonomous system boundary router, ASBR. Redistributing external routes from, and there's nothing here. Hmm. So what it's telling me is that this router, router two, is the border router between the internet or some outside network over here on the right side, and our internal network on the left side. But we aren't actually telling other routers how to get there. Let's actually go to router one, show IP route, and let's see what we got on show IP route. Gateway of last resort is not set. So we know nothing about the internet here. I could do a show IP OSPF database, and you can see it looks like that. No outside route whatsoever. We have no way of getting out to the internet. We can get to our loopback 0, 2222 on router two. That's not a problem. 
but if I tried to ping some outside interface, like uh, outside address, like let's say 4.4.4.4, it's going to die. I'm going to control shift six that, and that is because I have no route to that IP address. We're going to change that. We're going to go back to router two. I'll just do a show run to refresh your memory about the command we typed in under OSPF. You'll see here it was default information originate without the always statement at the end. So what this means is that because I don't have a static route going out, so I don't have an IP route 0000, 000, 000, 000, 000 and then an IP address 192.168.1.2. I don't have a static default route going out. It means that I'm not going to advertise any default route to my other routers inside. So if no corresponding default route is on router two, then I'm gonna basically say, well, since I don't know how to get out, I'm not going to lie and tell my other routers on the inside how to get out. Now, let's see if we can fix that. There are two ways of doing it. First of all, I could go on router two and put in a static route. 192.168.1.2. Gonna pop in that static route. Now I'm gonna do a show IP OSPF database. And you can see right there, as soon as I added in that static route, I now have a type five external link going out this direction. If I do a show IP protocols, you could see here, let's see, redistributing external routes. Okay, so I guess it's not gonna say anything over here. That's not a big deal. Now, if I bring over router one's console window, show IP, actually it's hit the up arrow a couple of times, show IP OSPF database. So this is how it looked before right here. Let's see if it looks any different. Show IP OSPF database, and it is different. We now have a type five external link. So basically a route out to the internet. It basically says that if I don't know how to get there, so this is the all zeros, then I'm gonna chuck it over to router 2.2.2.2. Let's give this a shot, ping 4.4.4.4. Now there's no way this is going to respond, but it's just for kicks, we hit enter. And it's trying to send it out, but it's actually not going to go anywhere. And the reason we can see this working is if we go to router two, we'll start a debug, IP packet. When I bring in my router one, I'm gonna start that ping again, just hit the up arrow. You can see the pings hitting router two. Okay, now router two is going to chuck them out fast zero one, but you know, nothing's not gonna, you know, nothing's gonna happen because there's no other router on the other side of router one or router two. But uh, that's not a big deal because uh, that's pretty much uh, what we expected to happen. You know, we're pretending that this side is the internet. So it's throwing it out here, but you know, nothing's really happening. Nothing's coming back. Okay, so we'll stop the debug. So you could see what default information originate. So show run or actually we should do it on router two. Remember not to get these routers mixed up. It's kind of, can happen quite easily. So show run on router two. You can see this default information originate. We only shot the route to router one after we added in this static route. So if we take out the static route, that information to router one is going to be also taken out after it times out. It's going to be nuked from router one's routing table. Okay. So let's say you wanted this default route to stick, whether or not you have a static route in there. So let's play around. Let's get rid of that static route. No IP route, all zeros, all zeros, 192.168, 1.2, so we have nuked that static route, show IP OSPF database. And you can see I do not have my type five LSA in there, it's gone. Show IP route, nothing is there. If I bring in router one, let's see if it has been nuked out of that table, show IP OSPF database, and it's gone as well. Show IP route, 
and yeah it looks like it's gone so that's pretty cool so let's say I wanted a default route in there even though I don't have a static route okay we can use we could do that by doing the always command after default information originate so we'll go back into router OSPF1 default information originate and the word always exit out of there just do a show run to make sure that command stuck and here we go under OSPF default information originate always notice I do not have a static route in here but magically if I go to router 1 now hit the up arrow we do have a default route here this is pretty cool and it's an external type 2 for OSPF it's saying hey if you don't know how to get to anywhere just chuck it to 10.10.12.2 just if you don't know where to go hit router 2 and router 2 will magically decide on its own where to send it now this is kind of dangerous because router 2 right now really doesn't have any way of going out to the internet because we've taken out that static route that default route to the internet but you know if you wanted the other routers to always send a router to no matter what then the default information originate command which is what we typed somewhere up here there we go that command is your ticket to always tell the other routers to hit your border router all right so that was a quick and easy video of setting default information originate and default information originate always with OSPF with a simple two router topology. Very simple to do. Thanks for watching.